Hey gang, Scott here. In my last video, I shared with you how to convert a LUT into a camera profile you can use with Adobe Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, or, or Camera Raw in Photoshop for that matter. In this video, I wanna show you what I, I really wanted to show you in the first place, uh, but I needed to explain how to convert a LUT first, is when you're using a LUT that is made for a black and white look, uh, how there's a little bit of a difference in, in the way Lightroom processes that, and it gives you some interesting additional control, at least I think it's interesting and uh, additional control, over the adjustments of your black and white after applying one of these LUTs. So the easiest way for me to show you this is just to uh, explain it, compare you know, one of the built-in profiles from Adobe that's monochrome versus something that I've converted. So let's have a look. If you've worked with black and white before in Lightroom, you'll know this dance. We come up into basic, I've hit auto already. I can click black and white, which selects the Adobe monochrome profile, or I can also open up the profile browser in the black and white category. You know, there's all sorts of different treatments. And I'll just pick this BW2 one for, for sake of argument. And once you've applied one of these Adobe black and white profiles, we tend to move on down to the B&W panel so we can adjust the mix, right? You can raise and lower the you know, intensity of the various color channels. You can work with, with things on the photo itself, you know, pushing things around to get that, you know, tonality, you know, darken certain things, lighten certain color ranges, stuff like that. Um, that's all fine and great. Works, works like a champ. Now what happens when you use a camera profile that is uh, converted from a LUT and that LUT gave you a monochrome look? Well, the black and white panel doesn't show up. It, it doesn't change. You know, Lightroom doesn't know that it's got a black and white treatment. It just knows this was a LUT and I, I'm, I'm using it as a camera profile. I'm doing what the LUT tells me to do. Map one color to another. It just so happens they're all being mapped to grayscale. And I find this to be interesting because it gives you a different level of control. Let's have, to have a look. So I've reset the world. I'm back to Adobe Landscape. I have my auto button clicked. And now I'm gonna go into the profile browser and I have some LUTs that I've converted from On One Effects that I really like and often I want to use them straight away. And some of them are for black and whites, like Fixer. I'm going to click on Fixer, okay, and just choose that. So I've applied this particular camera profile that has done a black and white treatment. All right, so I'm done with Basic, and you'll notice there's no black and white panel. There's still the color mixer. You know what's going on. Lightroom doesn't know that this LUT that's been converted to a profile is doing a black and white treatment. It just knows I've got this profile and it says, you know, take you know color A and map it to color B. And it just so happens that all of those mappings end up being you know, some, some uh, grayscale, some, uh, some shade of gray. So the black and white panel doesn't show up. If I open the color mixer and I go to the mixer, I mean, I have all of these things we've had before. And you know, for luminance, I can click on this and you know, take take things and drag them up and drag them down and and do what I would normally have done in the black and white panel. I just don't have the panel. But what I also have is point color. And this is where things get kind of interesting to me. Now, I'm going to hit the backslash key here. This is not a a cam a, a photo that's like very rich in color, but there are certain colors in here. And so as I click the eyedropper and like out the horizon you know, there's some blue out there it's subtle but it's out there uh, there is definitely yellow in the sand uh, there was some green in the mosses here somewhere around here right there there we go there's all these different colors here and I can adjust those individually like the luminance of just say green. Now I'm trying to do just the mosses. I have the range. I can back things off. You know, we, we have we have some interesting ability. Notice the mosses on the left hand side where I've got mosses and even grass way out in the the, the mid to background there. What about the sand? Right? I take that luminance and I can shift it around. I've shifted it down. I can lower its range so I'm affecting less of it. You've got some interesting level of control here because you have the power of point color 
and you can play around you're still playing around with uh, the luminance ranges it's almost like doing some some dodging and burning using color ranges but you're just working within the color mixer portion of uh, well the point color portion of the color mixer and I just found this to be quite interesting and this was the sky so I don't know if I'm gonna get well, yeah look at that I mean that 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 blue is really subtle but you know pulling it down really far is getting a little bit crunchy but we have that ability to bring in some other characters I find it to be uh, I, I find it useful because it's a more nuanced level of control over color ranges and I'm not necessarily having to do you know color range masks which once I've converted to black and white become kind of challenging <laughs> uh, but the point color thing when you're hovering over it you can still see kind of what's going on under the hood uh, so if you have been working with camera profiles and you have yeah, got some black and white ones and you've ever wondered you know what happened to black and white this is what's going on but uh, I see it as a good thing I see it as an opportunity to do something a little different to uh, have a little bit of a different level of control and uh, it's been fun it's uh, it's 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 making me approach some of my black and whites a little bit differently Hope you found the video useful. Questions, drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.